Welcome to Traveling Down, Biblical Archaeology for the 21st Century. I'm Gary Byers, this is Dr. Stephen Collins, and we're talking about our excavations, 16 seasons of excavations at Tal al -Hamam. That reminds me, we were not real young when we started that excavation, but... <laughs> well, neither one of us had hair back then either, but yeah. uh, we weren't... Wow, we were I, look back, I look back and it's like, I think the year we started the excavation, I was like 55. <laughs> I think that's probably it's about like, right. It's like, holy cow. It's been yeah, a we're, while. we're young. <laughs> yep, two years off for COVID, and uh, it's almost 20 years. Well, we, um, we've been doing it a long time, and uh, we found a lot of cool stuff. And uh, one of the reasons we started that excavation was because you had done the research out of the Bible and decided that uh, Sodom and Gomorrah needed to be northeast of the Dead Sea. So you put together a little expeditionary force. It needed to be northeast of the Dead Sea if it matched the biblical text. Based on the Bible. That's right. And if we, if we, and I, I would be of a mind that if the Bible had said what it said, and it did, it's northeast of the Dead Sea, and we'd have gone there and there was nothing there, I said, well, the text is wrong. Because I, I would have let it take me anywhere, south, north, east, west, across the ocean. doesn't matter. Sodom is where Genesis 13 specifies it to be, and that was northeast of the Dead Sea, and that's why we went there. And what we found kind of blew my mind. Yeah, because when I, saw, yeah. when I saw Tal El Hammam, and it was Rami Khoury's little book that I found in the, in the library at mm -hmm. Acor, uh, we were looking at survey reports and look at what archaeology might have been done in that area, and there was some excavation here and there, but um, he had a little chapter, he had a little book on the sites of the Jordan Valley. And book. his entry, we looked at all the entries in that area around the, what was the Kikar area that was, was specified in the Bible as the location of the cities of the plain, cities of the Kikar. And um, he had all those towns, he had 14 archaeological sites mentioned there. So we read through all of them and one stood out. Tal el Hammam. For Tal Imam, he starts the entry like this. Tal Imam is the largest archaeological ruin in the Jordan Valley. And I went, oh, okay. And he went on to describe how excavations, uh, probes, and surf, surf, surface surveys had confirmed that there was the early Bronze Age there and the middle Bronze Age there. And I'm thinking... Wow. And so we, we went and looked at all the small, smaller ones. Some of them are still pretty good size. But the smaller ones, for us, and I saved Talamon for last. Now, I've been on every significant archaeological site in Israel and Jordan up to that point. Been doing them all. You name one. And we've been there, looked at it, studied it, or maybe excavated there. Um, you know, Big Mighty Hatzor yeah. in the Upper Galilee, Ashkelon on the coast, the big sites. And I knew what it looked like to stand on the lower city of those sites and look up and see the upper city. And when we walked onto Tal Hammam for the first time, I could not believe my eyes. This thing was huge. And the next thing that hit me was, why in the world has no one ever excavated this before? It, it floored me. Now, Kay Prague... Who yes. came to know really well and actually had, had flew her from Manchester University of Manchester in England to come out to the site and hang out with us for, for several days. And she had started probing on the far west, and one of her uh, uh, workers, local workers, lost, a, I think, a foot to a landmine. They were down in the lower city. Yeah, down in the lower city. West. And so they, they cleared out, and they, they went back to Tal, uh, Iktanu, just to the south of us, where they were excavating. But um, We also had a friend that used to visit... Dr. Bill. Yes. And they would go and they would go, they were excavating nearby at Tel Alat Gazul. Yes, they were. And when they got tired of excavating, they'd go to our site and play around. Yes, they would. And we've seen a lot of their pottery over in, in Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. At the Pontifical where they Biblical it, Institute. It home. Yeah. yeah. So um, here was this big site, and uh, nobody had excavated it. Well, we found that part of the reason was that in the uh, 1967 to 72, it was overlaid, the, at least the western part of it was overlaid with landmines because the location was highly strategic in antiquity and it was highly strategic 
in the modern era, and there were there was a military encampment, uh, ba small base up on top of this thing with you know with tank emplacements and and all that, and so it was a it was a strategic area in the modern era as well. Now all that's been cleared off, but um, it still hadn't been excavated. It kind of blew me away. So we were the first people really to perform uh, an excavation of Tal Hamam. And we've got 16 years of data that we're working on right now to, to yeah, publish. Yeah, it's monstrous. Stuff. And in fact, it's, it, um, let's, let's talk about, you got a question here. Yep. Because I want to tie that question to, uh, the, to, the, to the size and prosperity uh, and, and quality of the city of Tal Hamam during, during the time of Abraham. So um, we've discussed over these last few weeks, we, we've discussed uh, Baba Draw. Uh, frequently, and that's the site that has been uh, suggested to be Sodom by by many of our colleagues. Many, many don't believe these are biblic these biblical cities were real. They were just figments of somebody's imagination. They were they were trying to explain a story, so they came up with this idea. Um, but here, here's the cities: Babadra, Numera, Fifa, Kanazir, and Safi. And those five, starting with Baba Dra were, and then Numera, were considered to be Sodom, Gomorrah, Adma, Zeboim, and, uh, and then uh, Zoar. No, 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 just Adma and Zeboim. Mm -hmm. So, so we've, got, we've got these cities, five cities of the plain that have in been suggested. In the southern area. In, down south at the, uh, the Tongue. And, and south. And farther south than that. So... Um, Talk about those five cities of the those five cities as being the cities of the plain in the book of Genesis, chapter thirteen. Yes, and I and then we'd have to compare them to the size of, of Tal Amman and its cities. Yeah. Um, first of all, uh, Babadra is very small. Babadra was an early Bronze Age city of about ten to twelve acres. By the way, the the interior fortifications of Tal Hammam, the, the, the spread of the tail, wadi to wadi, could go up to 300 acres. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a huge civilization spread just for the urban center itself. 62 acres inside the city wall, upper city, lower city. You can put, you know, five, six Baba Dras inside Tal Hammam. Mm -hmm. Baba Dra was always, even at its peak, a marginal barely uh, a town that b could barely scrape along and survive and when and, and that's true for Numera as well which by the way was not even a town it was a, it was a gar small garrison and um, and what's interesting is that people who tout all of these cities Babadra, Numera, Fifa, Kanazir and Safi as the five cities of the plain here's the problem there aren't five there are two Babadra and Numera there's a town site and a huge regional cemetery next door. Mm -hmm. FIFA, there's no settlement. Canisir has no settlement, and Safi has no settlement. They are all big regional cemeteries without settlements. There's no towns, no cities. And they're, and, and they're all simply places to bury nomadic, semi-nomadic people who happen to come through the region at certain times of year with their past... Uh, Passed, the relatives who've passed away and they've hauled them there to bury them in the family plot. Um, so, fact. Baba Draw is a small town, marginal. Numera was a small town. And by the way, Numera went out of business about 2600 BC, about 100 years before Baba Draw. Didn't even go down at the same time. But, but, and, and there are no cities at the other sites. So, if you're talking about that, quit talking about that because you don't know what you're talking about archaeologically. Now, um, Baba Dra and Numera and all the sites anywhere in that region went belly up when the climate changed sometime around 2500 B.C. That's at least 400 years prior to 300 years at least prior to the earliest possible date for Abraham you could possibly get centuries before Abraham ever existed, all of these cities were out of business. Now, Baba Dra does have a little extra mural, um, which you might call a little, a, a little a village, but outside the city walls, yeah. not in the, in the ruin itself. 
And it lasted, you know, for a couple hundred years. It's actually a nice little settlement, mm -hmm. but it's not fortified. Sodom is a fortified city. 19.1 saw lots of that in the gateway of Sodom, right? Sodom was big, impressive, worth coming all the way from Elam to collect tribute from. <clears throat> and guess what? Baba Draw didn't even exist in the time of Abraham. I don't care when you put Abraham. The archaeological evidence puts it earlier than, than, yeah. than folks and that, put and, the biblical And dance. that's why W.F. Albright was never even, never had a, had a first or second thought about making Baba Draw and Numera into the cities of the plain. He never suggested that, never thought about it. He didn't know where they were. Unfortunately, he never went and checked out the area north and east of the Dead Sea. Mm -hmm. He should have. He didn't. He never did his due diligence. He never did a proper analysis of Genesis 13. So what did he do? Now, now W.F. Albright was the greatest archaeological scholar of the 20th, 20th century. I think we could all realize so. that. At least the first, the middle of it. Where did he put Sodom in the cities of the plain? He put them underneath. He said, perhaps, and he, did, he never pontificated on it. He said, perhaps they were located in that area where the shallow southern basin of the Dead Sea is south of the Lisan Peninsula. And maybe that was there. And maybe when God destroyed the city, however he destroyed the city, there was a great earthquake and the land sank and the waters of the Dead Sea flowed over them and covered them. Now you've already looked at my last question. That's the last point. Oh, there you go. Way to go. And um, so Albright dismissed the early Bronze Age city, because the early Bronze Age cities, the early Bronze Age ended 2500 B.C. Archaeological fact, end of discussion. Now, what about underneath the waters at the south end of the Dead Sea? Well, that was a nice thought. But the, 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 the southern basin in the time of W.F. Albright, most of his life, was full. But in the last 30, 40 years, it's, it's drained out. <laughs> It's evaporated, and archaeologists have gone down there, and you poke around against it. There's not a shirt of pottery in that area. And, and not only that, it's a sump area. Geologically, it's a sump area, so whenever you get a big rainstorm, area fills up with water. Nobody ever built a campsite there, much less a city. And not only that, some people have said, well, maybe, and, and, and was it Russians or... Somebody yes. put, a, put a submersible in the Dead Sea a bunch of years ago. We were there in the country. We digging. were actually in country digging at Talamon when they did that. And I shook my head going, you got to be kidding me. The Dead Sea right now is at its lowest, just about at its lowest level in, in its history. Historical times, yeah. If the cities of the plain existed, how could they possibly be underneath the waters of the Dead Sea if the Dead Sea levels are at their lowest ever right now? And how much deeper does it still go in the northern basin? Yeah, a lot. H hundreds, hundreds of feet. Hundreds and hundreds In of other feet. words, and no, the Dead Sea wasn't created when Sodom and Gomorrah were destro was destroyed. The Dead Sea has been there, and that rift valley mm -hmm. has been there I mean, we can go all the way back to the Calcolithic and the Neolithic period and the Paleolithic period, and, the, and it's been there for a long, long time before human beings ever found it. So um, the cities of the plain were never underneath the water of the Dead Sea, not at the south end, not at the north end, not in the middle, not anywhere. They are where the Bible, where does the Bible place them? And here it is. This is the right time, right place, all the right stuff. And the only place to get right time, right place, right stuff for the city of Sodom is north and east of the Dead Sea at Tal El Hammam and all the wonderful satellite towns that surround it. And, and that's the end of that story. I mean, there is no other point of discussion. Now you can, you know, people with their websites and you know, all their pseudo-archaeology and all that stuff out there, you can continue to, to spin myths and legends if you want. But the fact of the matter is Tal El Hammam is Sodom. In fact, there's 25 geographical indicators in Scripture as to the location of Sodom, and they all point to Tal Hammam. There are more indicators for the location of Sodom in Scripture than there are for the location of Jerusalem. There are 18 indicators, geographical indicators in the Bible for Jerusalem. There are 25 for Sodom. Read, read the book, Discovering the City of Sodom, published by Simon & Schuster. Read that. Written by Dr. Stephen Collins. Yeah, well, yeah. Who is that guy? That's why you knew all that But stuff. anyway, 
I'm not trying to diss anybody. I mean, if you believe these things, if you've thought some of these things, you know, this, you know, if you're a Southern Sodom advocate, bless your heart. Um, but you're just wrong. You're textually wrong. You're archaeologically wrong. You're just ignorant, ignorant of the facts. And that's all I can say. So, um, but you say it lovingly. Oh, lovingly, of course. Yeah. So, um, you know, bless your heart. Read the text. Get with the archaeology. And as I said, it's, it's, that's pretty easy to check out. It is. It you is. know, it go is. get uh, Stern's five, four, four volumes, uh, you know, the archaeology, archaeological sites of the Holy Land, you know, yeah. the, encyclo the archaeological encyclopedia. Yeah. Of the Holy Just look up all the towns. None of those towns in Abraham's time in the Bible exist between 2500 and 1800 B.C. Okay. Sorry. Well, we've got all our questions. We've answered every question on the internet about Tal el -Hamam. Well, there might be some others, but <laughs> hey, keep those cards and letters coming in. Well, we're, we're excited about the things we found, and we're excited to talk about it. And uh, we're glad others are talking about it, too. And we would like to try to get set the record straight. So here we are. We'll be back again uh, next time, but uh, no more questions. But we got more stuff to show and tell. Oh, Always do we. new things. We appreciate your paying attention with us, listening. We appreciate your support of what we're doing. And we're so glad you're interested in biblical archaeology for the 21st century. Let's all keep traveling down.